Hi, Cole here from Storytelling with Data. Today, I'm going to share five super common slide slip ups and how to avoid them when creating presentations. Let's jump straight in with an example. If you'd like to process this slide in its entirety, I invite you to pause the video here. If that example looked familiar, it's because it's from the case study in my book, Storytelling with You. For those unfamiliar, the basic context is that I'm preparing for a presentation to my client, and this is one of the slides from that deck. It focuses on sales over time for their flagship product, the Trix Trail Mix, compared to competitors, as well as some spin-off products. Let's put that slide back up to transition. It's definitely suffering from some slip-ups. The first of which, the point is unclear. This, from my perspective, is actually the worst slide slip up of all, because if you're presenting and someone looks at your slide and doesn't know what you want to say with it, you've lost your ability to communicate effectively. Let's assume that out of all of this, the primary thing I want to make sure my audience knows is highlighted here. It's that 2015, we made a switch from macadamia nut pieces to whole macadamia nuts. And in particular, I want to draw people's attention to the fact that they gained market share from competitors when that change took place. If that's the case, let's consider what is typically the first thing people see when we put a slide in front of them, the slide title. This is a descriptive title, Tricks versus Competitor and Spinoff Products. Notice it's even in title case with the first letter of each word capitalized. What if instead of using my title to tell people what I'm going to show, Let's frame it as what I want my audience to see. Trix Trail Mix gained market share in 2016. This is a takeaway title. Notice it's in sentence case where I've capitalized the first letter, but none of the rest. Helps me think about titling in complete thoughts. What this means, even if my audience doesn't look at anything else on my slide, if they read the title, I've gotten my main message across. Put everything else back up there. This is still a mess, which brings me to slide slip up number two, too many colors. Take a look at those graphs and you'll note that every data series is in its own distinct color. Let's focus on the graph at the left. A simple change here can get people to look where we want them to. Let's make everything gray except for the tricks sales. Notice now we can see that increase in sales in 2016. Now, one thing we've complicated here with all these gray lines, a separate legend at the bottom of each graph isn't going to work, but I can deal with that by labeling the data series directly. I could even take my use of color a bit further, use it to highlight something else in that graph, help draw attention there, which is the sales of our competitors declining over that same period that Trix Trail Mix sales increased. There's still a lot to look at on this page. That is in part because of slide slip up number three, multiple graphs. When presenting data, when presenting anything, focus on one visual at a time. We go back to our slide. We already know we want people to look at the graph on the left. We take a look at what we've got on the right, spin-off products. The only time those are even mentioned in the text is sort of in passing at the top there. I might just get rid of all of that. It makes it so much easier to focus on the remaining graph. Now, that's not to say you're never going to use multiple graphs in a presentation, quite the opposite, in fact, but rather focus on them one at a time. And then when you need to go from one graph to another, link them together through your overarching narrative. Going back to that slide, as I mentioned, it's easier now to focus on the remaining graph. When I do, though, I see another issue, poor attention to detail. We'll deal with that bulleted text at the top in a moment. For now, direct your attention at the graph. Let's clean that 
Start by eliminating grid lines. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to the Y axis. I'll drop the trailing zero, also add an axis title. Speaking of titles, I'm going to take that graph title, make it shorter, pithier, and also move it to the left. Notice this creates some nice framing for my graph. And actually, if you let your eyes drift upwards from the title just a bit, you might notice that 2022 data is projected. So we want to make that visually distinct in the graph. We'll do that in a couple of ways. Make the lines dotted. Also added the word projected to my x-axis to make that clear. Speaking of the x-axis, this next one is a little bit tricky. Let me draw your attention to it. I'll make that x-axis orange for for a moment. And actually, if we add the tick marks, it's easier to notice the issue, which is that currently each point falls between the year labels. You can make a quick change there and modify it so each label aligns with the plotted data point. Now that I've done that, I'm going to de-emphasize that axis, also reduce the tick marks a little bit. And now that I do so, I realize I'm actually missing a y-axis line, so I'll add that with the respective tick marks. Now, you won't always need axis lines. There will absolutely be cases where you opt to remove those. Here, though, I like them because of the framing, the structure that they provide for my graph. The graph, at this point, is looking pretty good. But taking a step back, there's one remaining issue with this slide. Too much text. Don't let words on a slide compete for attention. I'm going to share here a strategy that I have talked about many times before, and that is to animate for a live setting or annotate if you're preparing something that's being sent around to be consumed on its own. Today, I want to take you through the Trix Trail Mix story. We'll be looking at sales over time. That's sales plotted in millions of dollars on the vertical y-axis and time on the x-axis with actual data through 2021 and then projected forward through 2022. Trix Trail Mix launched in 2012. Sales those first few years were right around $3 million. But then in 2015, you switch from using macadamia nut pieces to whole macadamia nuts. Uh, sales went nuts. That's a 45% year-over-year increase you see there. Sales since then have continued to be strong, even benefiting in recent years from growth in the overall snack market. We anticipate continued strong sales. Let's put your competitors on that picture. I'll just draw attention to 2015. Notice you did gain market share when you switched from macadamia nut pieces to full macadamia nuts. And you can imagine now how if the spin-off products warranted attention, I could take my story into that graph and use my narration to pull people through there. That works great for a live setting. For the scenario where I'm sending something around, I would annotate those important points directly on the graph. There you have it, five common slide slip-ups and how to avoid them. I invite you to put what you've learned here into practice. If you're watching this in February 2023, the current Storytelling with Data Challenge is to redesign a slide. We give you a real-world example, and you get to work your magic and share it with the Storytelling with Data community. If you're watching after that, you can browse how others approached it.